Hi again. In this video, we'll review the option of bypassing Math 6 for all incoming uh, sixth graders to Gibbs, uh, Gibbs uh, Middle School. So before I even begin, you know, I just really want to be clear. Um, it's always a time where we want a lot of information. I would request that all inquiries come to me. You know, for the most part, because this is transitional, where I'm working with the seven elementary schools as well as Gibbs, uh, funneling those requests to me is is the way to go. It's the most efficient way. Odds are, if you were to reach out to the teachers, they're going to be reaching out to me regardless. So I would just ask that we cut out the middleman, come right to me. Um, and then the next is, uh, the opportunity really is about providing an experience that is appropriate. Uh, for some of our students, they have appropriately shown some, some mastery, a good bit of mastery over the content for Math 6, and we're really trying to target those students. So the way we've approached it would be similar um, in the sense that we are looking for a really robust mastery of the bigger core concepts of Math 6 in order to be uh, eligible for this. So to touch on a couple of little historical facts. Um, this has been around for eight years. Um, it's when we, how we've been tracking data. Prior to that, uh, we had done it, uh, this was even before my time, more um, just as a, an at need basis. It really wasn't a formalized program. Uh, one aspect that was pretty important to me, one of the reasons why it took a few years to get it up and running, was because I really wanted to make sure that we had a geometry class in the middle school. So it was something that was housed there. So we, we do have that, we have that uh, there. Uh, the other thing that I've tracked historically was, or is, um, some of the gender data for who is sitting for the exam and who has accepted the exam. So out of all the years of this being existence, since it's been formalized, 40% uh, of the uh, those that have um, uh, sat for the exam identified as female, 53 have identified as male. Uh, I should say we may, may shift around some of our uh, tracking uh, of this metric. Uh, and currently, right now, 46% uh, who have been identified is, uh, they currently identify as female and 54% uh, identify as male. So our sitting population has matched our uh, enrollment population. I've said this before, we, we do need to do a little bit more work with making sure that this program is representative of more than just uh, a gender um, representation. We want to make sure that it actually has some other representation, which is definitely an area of improvement for us. So currently, right now, in geometry, there are 21 eighth graders. Um, we have a class that meets every day. Uh, you know, this has been a challenging year for a lot of reasons. Um, this course has met in an in person slash remote fashion the whole entire year. Since there's only one section, when we embedded this in the middle school, it was a little more challenging to, to look at. Um, cohorts could increase, they change in, in size. Normally, our cohorts are between, you know, typically it's between around 15 and 20 students. That's, I would say, is the, 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 um, the standard range. Uh, with an average around uh, 16 and change, about 16.3, I think, is the average cohort size per year. We don't do it based on percentile. We do it based on whether or not um, students meet the metrics that we set forth. Um, and that's what we'll, we'll talk about next. So this one's going to be a little bit more challenging for us. The only real data we have for MCAS is going to be third grade. So there will be no fourth grade data for these students. Uh, we will not have the fifth grade data in time in order to look at it. So I will look at and we'll pull that third grade data. Um, you know, this may take a little bit less of a uh, prominence, but this will be reviewed. Um, I will say one of the things that we'll look at as well, uh, we have iReady data. Uh, we have some in other internal assessments. We've been using Dreambox. So we've already aggregated all of our data sources for all of the students to really think about and consider um, not just programming for this, but other programming as well. Uh, so all of that will be reviewed. Really when it comes down to it, and this is the spirit of what we've done, um, we are looking for consistent high achievement in all of that trend data. I am looking for students who have, have shown very good mastery of all the content that we have expected students to learn throughout their third, fourth, and fifth grade years. That's really the spirit of this part. 
Um, the next part is, this is an opportunity to, to skip over all of sixth grade math. So another part is going to be sitting for um, a math six final. So last year we had uh, tried out an opportunity where we did this at home. We will be doing the same thing. Uh, essentially, I will be um, aggregating a list of all students who are interested in this opportunity. I'll be creating a Google Classroom and it'll be a little class that we will work on um, uh, kind of test taking expectations, the assessment expectations, but um, we will be allowing all students to take this at home at their own leisure uh, by a certain due date. Um, basically, there'll be a three day window uh, where students will be asked to do it. Um, we're just trying to be flexible. We're also trying to be mindful of this challenging time. So I, it's one of those things where I think it would work out better. Um, in this exam, again, we're looking for, similar to before, uh, that continued trend of, of really high achievement and really good mastery over the standards of, of that year. Another part of it, once students express interest, I'll be reaching out to teachers. I want to gain an understanding of who these students are as students. You know, this isn't just something where um, we, we skip an entire year of math. I want to make sure that the students are ready and that this is something where the achievement scores match the quality of work. I'm looking for those habits as a student, uh, that openness, that willingness to try out different ideas, um, the willingness to, to problem solve, collaborate, all these other little things that are just as important as the mastery of the content. Uh, when we're skipping um, the course, Inevitably, there's always going to be gaps, and I want to understand the student a little bit more fully to understand how they'll be at, at filling in those gaps. So I do get feedback from the teachers regarding all students. Um, at the end of all this, you know, we'll have students who, you know, uh, I'll look at all their trend data uh, for their third, fourth, and fifth grade years. I'll look at uh, the scores for the sixth um, uh, grade uh, assessment. I'll look at the feedback from the teachers. And then what I'll do is I'll um, have a meeting for all of us. It'll be a remote meeting. Last year, I did this as a video. Uh, this year, I'll do it as a, an actual meeting where I would love to do something where I would, can meet with all of you. Uh, it would be in a kind of a Zoom meeting with the students and talk about pros and cons and, and make sure I, I kind of put all of you in a position to be a good consumer. So once all this is done, if you're invited to be part of this, we do this meeting. Um, I have had people in the past that they're invited, we have this meeting, and then they decide that they would not like to pursue it, which is fine. You know, I, I'm a big believer in the fact that there should be some choice in this. So let me just kind of talk about the pathways. This is our standard pathway. If you watch the first video, um, this kind of goes along with it. All students are in math six, except for roughly about 5% of the population. Um, in seventh grade, we break off into two different pathways eighth grade, they continue. Uh, this is fairly routine. This is what we see the overwhelming majority of our students go through. Uh, if you bypass math six, um, in sixth grade, they would be in the math 7a class. In seventh grade, they would be in algebra one. In eighth grade, we do have in our eighth grade a geometry class. And then when they enter the high school, they'll have a choice to either enroll in algebra two honors or algebra two a. So they are one step ahead in that pathway. Uh, this is another way to say that, for all intents and purposes, by the time they complete their ninth grade year, they've really already completed their core high school math requirements. The intention is for us to really finish that around 10th grade, uh, and they will be uh, finished with all of it through ninth grade. So uh, that is um, kind of the, uh, I should say this, the intention is to finish it through 10th or 11th grade. Uh, but this would be one of those things where you'd be done then. Um, Talking about some of the assessment strategies. So this to me is an important aspect of that math six final. I am not just looking for students who can give me the answer to this problem. I'm looking for students who have a deeper understanding of, can you draw a picture of this? Can you give a context for why this is true? Um, there are a lot of students who might do keep change flip and then tell me the answer is going to be you know, one half times four over one, and then they'll give me an answer of two, which is great. Um, if a student just purely does that, to be clear, 
I'm not going to assess it as highly as it assesses a student who can make those connections to something deeper. Um, this is not a um, can the student get the answer. It's more of does the student understand proportional reasoning in depth for sixth grade math. Um, if they're doing a program that is skipping sixth grade math, I want to make sure that they understand what they're skipping. In sixth grade, we also start to learn about steps in solving. You know, I have some students who will do a lot of steps to solve this first problem, um, which is great. I'm glad that they understand some of the mechanical aspects to it. Um, but I'm going to ask questions that are slightly different. I'm going to ask questions where the steps may not be so clear, but they do have to lean on their um, number sense and their understanding. So they might see things that are a squared equals nine. You know, I'm looking for, do they understand that there might be multiple answers? For the absolute value of m equals negative seven. Uh, you know, I've, I've given problems like this before where students are trying to do all these different steps. My hope is that kids can keep their sense about them and say that there isn't an answer. Um, so these are the kinds of things that we're looking for. Um, there obviously is going to be some fluency parts to it as well. You know, in spite of the fact that I do want that depth of understanding, I also want to make sure that they've mastered certain skills. In sixth grade, at that the end of the year, they're expected to master the division algorithm. They're expected to be able to kind of be facile with some standard procedures. So that will be part of the assessment as well. Okay. Um, other little things that are going to be there, since they're jumping into a seventh grade math class and sixth graders, uh, as sixth graders, I want to make sure that there's a certain level of structural algebraic reasoning. So there might be places where they're going to be connecting, you know, 36 times 24 to how we might expand this. So again, I'm looking for depth of understanding of, of what uh, these kids know. All right. So for the next steps, really, when it comes to it, um, if you were to use your phone, uh, just put it on this. Uh, your the the um, the picture taking um, app on your phone will send you to a website where you can sign up for this opportunity. I'll be keeping a list. Um, I'm going to try to see if we can send out this information as many ways as possible, just to kind of uh, keep everyone in the loop. Um, feel free to share this with other friends and. Um, different community members that you know are interested. I just kind of spread the word. Um, I'm going to do my best with that as well. Um, but overall, um, if you do sign up for this, look out for an email from me over the next couple of weeks and we'll see if we can kind of get this going. Um, thanks again and I look forward to uh,